Hey everyone, Metagross Freak here, and I don't normally do public service announcement style videos, but I'm in a class this semester called Diversity in Education Settings, and the class uses uh, a textbook called Affirming Diversity, uh, the Sociopolitical Context of Multicultural Education, and while that's a big mouthful, it's basically about uh, avoiding discrimination in the classroom or teaching setting. It's actually a really fascinating book. But for this uh, this latest chapter, I had to write a response and I wanted to share what I had to say with you. Um, so this chapter is titled uh, Racism, Discrimination, and Expectations of Students' Achievement. If your last name is Black, man, why aren't you black? I, I can't tell you how many times I've heard this question over the course of my life, countless times. Though I hear it far less, m more often in the more mature company of my college peers. While not in the same extent as discrimination more classically seen, such as racial profiling or hate crimes, to me this simple question was still discriminatory. When asked out of pure curiosity, I would explain that my family had many reasons. That on my father's side, I may have had blacksmith ancestors that came through Ellis Island. That my great-great-grandfather was a member of the Blackfoot Indian tribe, or more likely, from the Irish name pertaining to an Irish man whose hair was black rather than ginger. More often, this statement, however, is used in a more mocking way, as if the color of my skin determines what surname I'm worthy to carry. Even in my small-scale example, it is obvious that our world is full of prejudice and people unwilling to try to break the mold, to change our society from one of fear to one of acceptance. People who discriminate only have power as long as you let them. These are powerful words to live by and strong advice to help shield an insecure boy being bullied through school. For me, I was discriminated not only because of my last name, but for my size. While I've grown into my figure, years back when I was just as heavy but over a foot shorter, I was tormented. Uh, by far the largest student in my class, my peers, had a prejudice against me because of my weight and felt the need to tell me on an almost daily basis. I distinctly recall one instance when I couldn't take the mocking anymore and I screamed at my tormentors to stop. The children ceased for a moment before one girl said, I thought fat men were supposed to be jolly. After they finished laughing, that was when I began to hide my emotions. Over the years, I stood unyielding like a rock on the beach, their stinging words crashing against me like waves. As I resisted, they lost interest in their game and felt I felt free from my suffering. Our, our book, Affirming Diversity, preached that schools suffer with classism, racism, and in more modern days, homophobia. But my comparison to those pre... but in in, uh, in comparison to those prejudices, I was a minority. It, I, I know it can be weird or hard to imagine a, a white male being a minority, but in a world where a majority of my fellow students were athletic and ethnically diverse, I was in my own little world, population me. Over the years, I began gaining the confidence to stand up not only for myself, but for the others I believe in. It was because of my past that I am such a strong supporter today, engulfing the case studies of the chapter that I had to read this week. In particular, I was drawn to the case study involving the Springfield Renaissance School's campaign against the anti-Indian mascots. I have done a similar project uh, previously in the summer. Like the students of Springfield, I believe that we cannot sit idly and be silent to oppression. If we want to bring an end to discrimination, we must make a stand for what we believe in. I may not look like it, but I'm proud to say that I carry Native American blood in me, although it isn't enough to be a card-carrying member. While reading the particular spotlight, a fire stirred in me of my distant ancestors wanting the respect they deserved. The anti-Indian mascot campaign focuses on teams like the Braves, the Warriors, the Chiefs, and the Redskins. Based heavily in stereotypes, there have been many movements within the last decade to force sports franchises to change the names. 
My favorite example of this activism comes from the National Congress of American Indians, titled Proud to Be. I'm not going to re read a transcript of their uh, video, but I'll post it in the comment in the uh, the description below. And please check it out. It's actually a really cool video. Um, <laughs> that's the one issue of our society that even our friends, our family, are just we face every day. Discrimination is adversity to diversity, but only by looking between the lines do we see that our differences not only make us unique and special, but vital to society as we know it, a mighty cog in the ever-flowing clockwork we call the human race. Just as I support today's movements for equality among race and gender and sexuality, so must we against the oppression in our everyday lives, even small discriminations like a sexist comment in the workplace, treating someone poorly because of their weight, or making judgments against our fellow brethren because of the very tone of their skin is backwards thinking. It is the year 2015 AD. Why must we still linger on social inequities when there are larger issues in the world to tackle? Alone, we are but whispers in the wind. Together, we are a howling storm. I'm Ryan Blackman, and that is what I have to say on discrimination and racism. Uh, please leave your comments below. I'd love to hear what you have to say, though please be mature about it. And I'll see you next time. Bye.